Hi, my name's James here at the Dartford Training Centre and today we're going to talk about Megaflow. Okay, today we'll be working on this Megaflow. We'll be looking at identifying, changing and servicing the combination valve. First thing we need to do is isolate the cylinder. We can isolate the water, but we also need to isolate the power. Once the power's off, we need to prove the power's off. Safe isolation is very important. Remove the cover to expose the electrics. We need for this a proving unit and a voltage indicator. The power's off, but is it off? So first thing we need to do is get our power indicator and prove that it works on our proving unit. So if we push it into our proving unit, we have all the lights on, our voltage indicator is working, it's indicating voltage. We then test on our block, live and neutral, no lights, live and earth, no lights, neutral and earth, no lights, and if we test across the others, this is coming from the heating system. We have absolutely no power going to our cylinder. Once we've proved the cylinder, we need to prove our voltage indicating device. Check it's still working. It is. Everything's good. We are safely isolated. So first, we're going to open the tap. Once we've taken the pressure off, I would open my TMP valve so I can drain down the cylinder for my air gap. So this is the set for the Megaflow. Here we have a pressure reducing valve with an inline strainer built in. Down here we have a pressure release valve and a non-return valve. So with the grips, we need to gently put them on here and undo the head of this so we can check the filter. As you can see, this filter is partially blocked. We need to clean it because it can affect the flow rate coming out of the cylinder. So first, we need to remove the filter, which just pulls out like that. We need to wash it out. We can wash it under a tap or in a bucket. Nice and easy, and as you can see, nice and clean. So we need to replace the filter on the head and replace the head back onto the body. Being careful not to cross thread it as it is plastic onto brass. We'll do it nicely hand tight. And once we've got it hand tight, get our grips and gently nip it up. Not too tight, it is plastic after all. Now we're going to look at changing this unit. As you can see, it's slight water damage. This could be from a nut, could be from a pinhole in the casting. This could have been damaged by overpressurization. So we'll look at changing this unit. For this, we're going to use two spanners. We could use grips, but because it's brass, we could damage it. Okay, we need to hold the unit there. Two flat edges for our spanner. Get the other spanner onto the nut and loosen. We can now undo them with our fingers. When we replace the new one, make sure the arrow is going the direction of the water. Tighten up the nuts, finger tight, turn it to the direction you want it facing and we will nip the nuts up. Now we're going to turn the water on and check for leaks. I'm going to turn the tap on and pour some water through. Get rid of the air, good flow of water, excellent. 
As an installation tip, if you've got a tall building, any cylinders at the bottom of that building, put a valve on the hot water out of the cylinder so you can isolate it and you don't need to drain all the water out of the building. Thank you.